Innal hamdalillah Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bih wa natawakkalu alayh wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlilhu falan tajida lahu waliyan murshida wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah la dhidda lahu wa la nidda lah wa la mithla lahu wa la mathila lah ولا شبه له ولا شبيه له ولا ولد له ولا والد له ولا ابن له ولا ابنة له ولا صاحب له ولا صاحبة له ولا زوج له ولا زوجة له وهو الأحد الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا وأسوتنا وقدوتنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا ورائدنا وحبيب ربنا وطبيب قلوبنا الحبيب محمد عبد الله ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كلامه المجيد وفي فرقانه الحميد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى وخلقناكم أزواجا وقال تعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Respected جماعة We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى for granting us opportunity to be here on this blessed day the day of Friday We say Alhamdulillah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send our greetings, blessings, salawat and salam to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of his companions including all of us until the day of judgment. We say ameen. Respected jama'ah, today we will be talking about happy family. What are the pillars? of a happy family and we will be talking about five main points number one at taqwa number two as sakina number three al mawadda number four ar rahma and number five mutual understanding at tafahum Number one, At-Taqwa, which means God-consciousness. Number two, 
Asakina. That means tranquility, peace. Number three, Al-Mawadda, love and affection. Number four, Ar-Rahma, mercy. And number five, At-Tafahum, mutual understanding. My beloved brothers and sisters, why to think that I want a happy family? When we should think? What is the perfect time to think that I want a happy family? Is it before marriage or after marriage or after passing many years of marriage and suffering many problems and then we think that we want a happy family? When to think? Oh, Respected Jama'ah, it is before marriage. Long before marriage, when you are planning to marry, the time you have to think that I want a happy family. And the first and foremost fundamental element to be happy family is taqwa, the piety, the God consciousness. As it is mentioned, in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5090, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tumkahul mar'atu li arba'a. Usually, a woman is married for four things. Usually, people, they choose four things. It differs person to person. تنكح المرأة لأربعة لجمالها ولمالها ولحسبها ولدينها Number one for beauty People sometimes they look for beauty I want a beautiful one I want a beautiful spouse Number two ولمالها for wealth Is she rich? Is he rich? Number three, Wali Hasabiha and family status. Is he from sophisticated family? Belongs to high status. A family with very good standard. And number four, Wali Diniha and for piety, for religion for God consciousness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed فَظْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَلْبَتْ If you choose the piety, then you will be blessed. And these are the fundamental instruction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave in many verses. Even from the very beginning of human creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the criteria to be respected or to be dignified is piety, taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujarat, Surah number 49, verse number 13, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَقْتَاكُمْ O mankind, we have created you from a single pair of men, from a single pair of male and female, Adam and Hawa عليهما السلام. And then we divided you into tribes and nations so that you know each other easily. What is the criteria? What is the criteria to be respected and dignified? It's not the nation, it's not the standard, it's not the wealth, it's not the beauty. Indeed, the most noble of you is the most good God conscious of you. Who is muttaqi? 
who is God conscious. This is the criteria for to be dignified or respected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he advised in the very beginning of human creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us in Surah An-Nisa Surah number 4 verse number 1 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a O mankind fear Allah who created Adam and from Adam he's made Hawa alayha salam and from both of them Allah spreads many men and women and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again he is reminding fear Allah fear Allah through whom you ask one another Wal arham, and be conscious of the relationship of kith and kin, the womb, the blood relationship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding taqwa, taqwa, God consciousness, God consciousness. Why is that? It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the scholars, he put a triangle like this. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you consider Allah is the highest commander and you both, husband and wife, you are in the bottom of two angles, how much you become close to God, close to Allah, you are becoming close to each other. This is the basic pillar to be happy, to have a happy life. Respected jama'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then instructed what is the purpose, what is the second pillar of happy married life? It is a sakina, peace and tranquility. And if no peace at home, it is one of the peace of hellfire. Why we should go home? Why you should be at home because this is the place of rest this is the place of peace and tranquility this is the place when you enter into a house you forget all sadness sorrow stress distress what you got outside the house that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An Nahal, Surah number 16, verse number 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakana. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made your homes for yourselves as a place of rest. Sakana. Subhanallah. When we are tired from work, and from many stress, distress, dealings with people, we go home and this is the place of peace and happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this is not only, this is not only a place of happiness and rest, but it is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your house is a piece of, is a piece of peace. Subhanallah. The house is a store of peace. When you go home, you feel calm and quiet and relaxed. SubhanAllah. This is what exactly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al rum Surah number 30, verse number 21. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa min ayatihi أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Allah Akbar One of the signs and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discussed many signs here in the surah Surah Ar-Rum, surah number 30 here verse number 21 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah created your spouses from yourselves for what? So that you feel peace and tranquility to your spouses. So now, my beloved brothers and sisters, ask yourselves, when you go home, are your children feel peace and tranquility? Is your wife feeling peace and tranquility and relaxed? Or she is busy, more busy. When you are home, she is more busy. And some of my brothers, to be honest, we are sad to mention it, that when we are at home, we are busy with mobile phones. And we are not giving specific time for our spouses. Subhanallah. And we got complaint from our sisters that we don't, he doesn't give me time. He is like, is not a member of our family. He is busy with something else, with outsider worlds. And he should be the person in the house, the center of peace. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us. We say, Ameen. Ameen. So I request all my brothers and sisters to have one hour at least without your mobile phones, with your spouses. And uh, you see the change. How you get back this peace and tranquility. Remember the first month of your married life. Remember the first year how you spent. And discuss how can we bring back that peace and tranquility. What we used to feel in our first year, in our first month. And without this, subhanallah, my dear brother, brothers and sisters, the house is not a house. The house is not the place of peace and tranquility. Then it comes point number three. Love and affection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah ar -Ru, Surah number 31, Surah number 30, verse number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after litaskunu ilayha Allah says waja'ala baynakum mawadda and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created made love and affection between your spouses subhanallah between husband and wife specifically between husband and wife Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created love and affection my beloved brothers you are spending your whole life, you never tell your wife how much you love your wife and your wife also spending like how the everyday is going as usual. Is it like that? Was the life of Prophet wasallam like that? Every day saying, is busy with something else. And exactly how you increase your love. Rasulullah sallallahu said, Tahadu, Tahadu. Give gifts, then your love will be increased. Subhanallah. When is the last time you gave a gift to your wife? Remember, try to recall. Maybe it's so far, maybe long, long time ago. Please, you have to increase the love in your family. These are the pillars of a family to continue. Subhanallah. And we appreciate her contribution. And our sisters should appreciate our contribution. And uh, Subhanallah, uh, Imam is saying that to appreciate, appreciate and may you go home and then uh, you appreciate, Masha'Allah. Today's cooking is very, very delicious. Uh, and then your wife will say, okay, I'm cooking for you for 10 years. You never appreciate me. And this, uh, this uh, food came from our neighbor, our, my sister. And today you are appreciating the food. My beloved brothers, how you know that this is her cooking? 
if you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then exactly you can appreciate to the point what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. Whenever he used to be at home, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to be at home, he used to help me, subhanallah, in cooking, in things, small, small things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to help me and when the azan is called, he used to go out. Subhanallah. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love will be increased. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Help her, appreciate her, assist her in her works. And uh, our brothers maybe will complain after khutbah, brother, you are asking to appreciate and help them. They should appreciate us too. Yes. This is vice versa. Subhanallah. We have to we have to make strong and stronger and strongest. Because my beloved brothers and sisters, if you separate from your family, if you destroy the family structure, well you are going to follow the rules and regulations of Islam. If you destroy the family bondage, this unseen tie, this unseen bond, you are destroying the peace and love and tranquility. Subhanallah. Insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to increase our taqwa, we say ameen. To increase peace and tranquility, we say ameen. Love and affection, we say ameen. In our second khutbah, Insha'Allah, we will mention two more things, mercy and mutual understanding. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. إن الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Respected Jama'ah, point number four is the mercy, Rahma. There must be a Rahma between spouses. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah ar rum Surah number 30, verse number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Rahma is mercy. When we need mercy, when we are in need of help and assistance, I am sick, I need help. I am poor, I need help. And sometimes my sleep is very deep, so I need help. We can help, we can take help from alarm also, we can help from each other also. We need help, especially when we are sick or under stress or distress. We need help, we need mercy, we need rahma. My beloved brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the main characteristics of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah number 21, verse number 107, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and surely, indeed, we have sent you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a mercy for the whole of the universe. 
for the whole of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy. So your children should feel the mercy from your side. Your wife should feel the mercy from your side. Your husband should feel the mercy from your side. You should be merciful. Anytime, for example, your wife is uh, cooking and cutting the tomatoes or uh, carrots and she slightly cut, cut, cuts her finger and you are working, you are listening, she is crying and you are just working because you are busy. No. That time it will be proven whether you are merciful or not. Whether the mercy is knocking your heart or not. And your wife is taking two child, two, three children and she is struggling and you are working like a man. So you are not a true man. If you are sharing and caring, then you are a true man. My beloved brothers and sisters, we need mercy. We need rahma between our brothers and sisters, our married brothers and sisters. And we need point number five, at-tafahum, mutual understanding. And this is the bottom line. This is what we need when you feel sometimes the last point is tafahum, mutual understanding. Why is that? Sometimes, some of our brothers, they don't want to listen to their wives because they are asking to go to the masjid to mix with good friend and they are not listening. And vice versa, the husband is advising his wife and she is not listening. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Listen to the hadith, what, which is mentioned in Mishrat al-Masabih. Anas radiallahu ta'ala narrated Hadith number 2354 Anas radiallahu ta'ala narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ayyuma mra'ati Any woman Man sallat khamsah Wa samat shahraha Wa hafidat farjaha Wa ata'at zawjaha فَلْتَدْخُلْ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شَاءَتْ سبحان سبحان Any woman, if she prays five daily prayers and observe fasting in the month of Ramadan and she guards her chastity and she obeys her husband, see the reward. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the all doors of paradise are open for her and she can enter into paradise for whichever door she wants to enter. Subhanallah. All the doors of paradise are open for her. Five daily prayers, fasting in the month of Ramadan and guarding her chastity and following, obeying her husband. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed our brothers, فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَسَبِيلًا As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 34, 35 and 36. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is a big misconception then the man is uh, is is a dominant power in the family. It's dominating. It's not like that. That a man is taking care of. A man is taking more burdens of the family. A man is taking care of any difficult thing he is ready to do. Subhanallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. In Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, verse number 34, Surah number 4, verse number 34, 35 and 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-rijalu qawwamuna ala al-nisa. It needs 
another khutbah. Because if I leave it like this, people might think, oh, men are dominating power in the family, so these this, uh, Muslims, they are uh, subjugating women. So we cannot leave it like that. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rijal Qawwamun. The men are in charge of Alad Nisa, of their family, their women. Ar-Rijal Qawwamun Alad Nisa, Bima Faddala Allahu Ba'dahum Ala Ba'd. By which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted bounties over each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here didn't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted bounties for men above women, above each other. And there are many examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Maryam alayha salam and Asiya bint Maz'oon that are better than many men. Laysa dhakaru ka unfa she was, she was a woman it's not like a man. She is better than many men. Subhanallah. وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And by which they spend for their family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the responsibility to man to take care of his family. And what is the responsibility, the fundamental responsibility of a woman? The righteous women are obedient. Obedient to whom? Obedient to their husband only? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say here, Qanita li azwajihim. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasalihatu qanita They're obedient. Every sister, everyone. Righteous means they're obedient to first and foremost to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing comes, which is the right of husband. Hafidhatun bil ghayb. And they keep guarding their chastity. Bima hafidhallah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarded. And inshallah, we will talk about this verse. What is the purpose of sharia among the purposes of Sharia is to clean the lineage, the generation. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately, if you have problems with your partner, with your spouse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the misconception is going here and there that men are allowed to beat his woman his wife. Husband is allowed to beat his wife. It is not like that. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the criteria fa'idhuhunna advise them and by the advice by the advice, good advice majority of our sisters will be with you. Only if you can advise with love and care and kindness and mercy, she will follow you. She will listen to you. Number one, If it is not working, Then leave in one single bed, but with the different direction. This is the second step. And the third step, still, it's not stopping. Not with the stick you, so you strike and beat. No. Beating can be by words. If you say harsh word, kind of beating. Subhanallah. And if it's not working, what do you have to do? You have to call someone from your family and she needs to call someone from her family. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا You need to call one from your family and one from her family and they will discuss how to settle the problem. 
and then if you don't if you cannot agree still you have chance many things and the time will not cover for our topic for this khutbah inshallah we will talk in this topic in another khutbah specially and specifically our brothers and sisters what they need to do more to keep his and her family happy a happy family can be happy number one if we summarize number one is taqwa this first point will solve all the problems number one taqwa which is god consciousness both of you try to be close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two as sakina peace and tranquility make your family the source of peace and tranquility and number three mawadda love and affection you try to increase your love by remembering and implementing how you used to show your love and affection in your beginning days and number four mercy be kind to her be responsible to her be caring to her merciful and number five mutual understanding may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everyone's family a piece of paradise full of peace and tranquility the source of taqwa the source of rahma the source of sakina peace and tranquility peace of mercy and if anything happen in the family may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to settle everything by mutual understanding may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sanctify our soul may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our mind may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our mistakes may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our flaws and faults may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every one of my brothers and sisters May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all deceased brothers and sisters in paradise who believed in oneness of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every one of us and save us, protect us from bad happenings, bad things happening to our family. May Allah save us. We say Ameen. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما أقيم الصلاة